anyways, uh, like I said, um, it's a it's a process from the Victorian era of photography, and uh, in fact, it's the second most popularized uh, process, photographic process, uh, only after the daguerreotype, when the daguerreotype proved to be too uh, uh, unwieldy and toxic. And uh, people, uh, practitioners were looking for a better, a better way of, of doing it and popularizing it. And they came up with it. This was, uh, although it was um, uh, credited to an English guy called uh, uh, Sir Frederick uh, Archer, it's actually uh, in 1851, but uh, actually it's a French guy. So. I'm um, I'm proud to be adopted, you know, by the by by this country. So I always clarify that that it's still a French guy, who actually has uh, um, laid the foundation for the theories and pra uh, the practice, you know, the chemical, the scientific uh, uh, aspects of it. It's a it's a French guy named Gustave Le, Le, Le Gray. Um, and he's also a very good photographer. He's a practitioner of the daguerreotype also. Anyways, um, at that time, after uh, it's still a uh, wet plate is the mother process. I say the mother process because uh, it, it branched into uh, uh, several categories uh, or classification because um, uh, of the only just because of the difference in the support that they use, you know, uh, there's the ambrotype. If the picture comes out in glass or made in glass, or it's also it's a thin type when it's in metal or melanotype. Uh, type, thin um, type, or uh, the ambrotype stayed in most. Uh, the popularity stayed mostly in Europe and elsewhere, but uh, in America, there's this phenomenon uh, of the tin type. Tin type uh, gained more uh, the, the upper hand in, Amer in the US because uh, at that time, it was the civil war, you know? The, the, Amer uh, the US is, is also laying its foundations as a country at the time, and it's the very important part of the uh, and tin type was the chosen for practical. I mean, the tin type, which is a wet plate on metal, was the chosen process because uh, uh, photographers would go to the to the battlefront and make uh, portraits of soldiers, and so effectively making the first war photographer a uh, wet plate collagen photographer. Imagine. Uh, the situation there, battlefront, all this dust and you know explosion and and death and misery. And there's this photographer who goes there to make portraits of soldiers who would uh, uh, would send these keepsakes to their families back home by mail. So it's not possible with glass, obviously. So tin type was developed. Anyway, so go back to uh, so that's the historical part of it. Uh, maybe we might run out of time. I have to. Uh, siguro ipakita natin yung camera. Maybe we should show the the first video. Should be the the camera, and just to let you uh, you know have a glimpse of uh, how how this thing uh, works because camera is the is the key to it. Of course, there's the chemistry and silver and all that, but the camera here is a camera from the eight, 1920s already, but I have older cameras from the 18, uh, 1870s, 1860s, but the lens, uh, so you see, there's a, it's a full functioning camera, it's, it's, it, uh, the tripod is already attached and it rolls, it's, it's a studio camera by, by that time, uh, by, a, by a manufacturer called Gilles, Gilles Faller. This is the epoch already when cameras are starting to get uh, 
uh, not really on an industrial scale, but they're already brands. Because you have to re realize at that time, everything is made by hand. So a lot of things are not standardized, the size, the chemical, and, you know, so it was difficult. So people at the time thought that we have to start standardizing it. And of course, that also paved the way for industrializing, commercializing stuff. And even that lens that you can see is from the 1890s. It's a Petzval lens. It's called the Petzval lens with no shutter. It's just a, two pieces of glass in one barrel. And, uh, and that's it. And it's made by hand. It's ground by uh, opticians of, of the epoch. And, uh, and yeah, so you see the bellows. It's, the bellows is like uh, how the, to get a magnification or, I mean, for the layman, what we call the zooming, but it's not really actually zooming, it's focusing. The bellows is, uh, takes care of the magnification and the focus. So there's no ring to turn. You have to move the bellows forward and backward to get, to get focus. And that's it for the camera. And next slide is, um, Okay, that's the, just to show you what's inside the box, the, that camera. It, that's between the lens and the glass behind, which is a giant LCD by this, by our present standard. But it's, a, it's called the ground glass. The image is inverted because the image is uh, passing through a lens that uh, makes it look like it's inverted in the, on the other end. You know, and like, uh, like present day large format cameras are the same. So that's the inside. It's basically, it's just a box with a, with a hole in front of where you attach a piece of glass. But in fact, you're not even obliged to. You, there's such thing as pinhole where you don't have, it's called the lensless photography, but we're not touching that. Anyways, next slide is, um, okay, we go now to the making of a photograph by, by this process. This, this is uh, how I set up. Uh, one of the pieces on exhibit for this year's fair. In fact, it's very recent. I, it's very, it's an exclusive piece that features rice. Rice, uh, this rice uh, uh, I inherited from uh, someone in the panel uh, who left it behind here, uh, like 10 or 15 years ago, I don't even remember. And I treasured it and uh, I've always, uh, anchored my work around this, these symbols that reminds me of home. And rice for me is not just a reminder of home. It's a, uh, it's, it's a nice, um, I mean, not nice, it's a beautiful and very powerful image to uh, represent what binds us all as Filipinos, not only as Filipinos, in fact, as Asians. And, maybe even wider than that because rice is a uh, well the staple food of uh, more than half of the world's population so there's so many things that's attached to it our struggles political you know poverty uh, you know uh, and i come from a uh, from nueva ecija where is the rice granary. So I grew up with the smell of rice uh, in my childhood. And uh, so that's how important is rice to me. And so it's always been my takeoff and it's my, it's some kind of a muse to me. It's my muse and it's not a person. Well, it's rice. I'm made of rice, Run, rice runs through my veins. <laughs> you can fast forward it already to the next one. So that's how I build up the, that image that you see with the, the three, the two of the pieces that I, that is on show. The, okay, that's the, that's the light that I use. It's uh, CFL lights. So I'm not a purist, like uh, sticking to just uh, tools and equipment and uh, materials uh, consistent with how they used it in the, 18th century. There are people like that who really lived the, the epoch and dress like it and you know talk like it and shoot like it. 
but I'm not like that. Uh, I, I belong to the ones who uh, try to to uh, play uh, uh, with the, what I can get, you know, around me. And and this uh, this process, it's so much light. Being uh, you know, a plate is only uh, ISO one one ISO at the most uh, on a, on a normal day. It's five ISO. You can get one ISO if your chemistry is fresh. And um, so what it means is it is not that sensitive. I mean, the sensitivity is not that good to light in the at the time. Of course, there's no electricity yet. So most of the people are building their studios with the sky skylights, you know, facing the north so that it's a consistent uh, on the whole day that there's there's a, a consistent light. Uh, but it, uh, jump to the present, us uh, who do it inside the house, especially here in Europe where there's not much sun most of the year. I mean, half of, not like our place uh, in Philippines where we have ample supply of it. I had to bring the sun inside. So I use this kind of lights. Uh, the, the, uh, at any given shoot, I, I'm using about 4,200 watts uh, seconds. I mean, I mean, my, my sensitive. Uh, if you if you go to the equivalence in flash, it's around 4,200 4, watts second. So these are CFLs, so it makes me save money, and consumption of electricity is uh, less because. It's, but it's so powerful. But I don't want to use flash because uh, flash is is so blinding. Imagine 4,200, it's like a, you get nuke in the, you go blind for a few seconds after, and I don't like to uh, expose my models through that. Anyways, uh, next, next uh, video is, well, I think the preparation already of a plate, no? Hello. Okay. Anyway, so that's, that's the, uh, that's how I set it up. You see, uh, I'm, I'm because this one is a self-portrait. I don't have assistance. So imagine I don't have a shutter in my camera, and I'm taking a picture of myself with this huge camera. So that's 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 the puzzle. And I I want to I, I'm only showing you this so that uh, you see. Uh, okay. Uh, the setup, so there's a hole in the table. So now I focus first, okay, there, because that's when I will take the picture. Okay. Yeah, see, uh, I have to, the camera has a tilt down movement. So it's all quite complete, uh, but it's just, uh, you know, still compared to present uh, modern modern cameras. It's still very rudimentary, and I like it because uh, it challenges you to play with what you have. Uh, I know why is it cut? The, the there is the exposure, the taking of the picture before that. Ah, oh, yes, okay, that's the perfect. After I focus, I go down to the dark room and play. Yeah, that's a right video to and prepare a plate. So after I cut the glass, you saw the previous video is me clearing the sides of the glass because it's very sharp. Otherwise, I, if, I, if it's not me who get cut, it's the, it's the who will, whoever will receive the glass might get cut by, the, by the, the sides of the glass. So we have to deburr it and it serves two purpose. When you deburr it, when you pour the collodion, the layer of film that you pour in it will have some, some tension on the sides or uh, you know, resistance and it will stick there because it's a uh, deburred, it's cleared uh, with a with a carborondum stone or wet stone that as they call it. Anyway, so I'm clearing the glass with the uh, calcium carbonate or what we call here blanc de moudon. It's whiting in English. Uh, I mean, calcium carbonate is the, the, the chemical, but it's called whiting in English and here it's uh, blonde de moudon because it's a, it's a kind of clay, very fine and abrasive, I'll mix with alcohol and water. So and then you clean the glass. 
uh, with it, both sides, because uh, just a little speckle of dust will show, uh, will ruin, uh, can ruin a picture. So you, you can imagine just from, from the preparation of the glass, it's already throwing something to you that will make uh, it not work. Just, just the dust that will settle uh, on the, uh, even at this stage will uh, will uh, will make or break your picture in a sense so next video so now i'm checking the glass like i said it has to be really really uh, dust free and and that i'm checking because sometimes there's uh, grease in the glass you know like uh, oils from your hand or from wherever, especially I'm dealing with the, I'm working with recuperated uh, or recycled glass that I gather from the streets of Paris, from pe what people throw away uh, when they replace their windows. You know, imagine uh, uh, the, the, the significance of using Parisian window glass with, with its own story of uh, you know, what it has seen this window uh, with this window has seen and who has looked down through it or and i'm just imagining stuff but i, I it, it excites me to think what these windows have seen and now i'm using it to capture another scene or another image like a window so you see it's so rich in uh like i always say it's so rich in metaphor and poetry just the fact that I'm using this kind of glass. So now you see me pouring the collagen. The collagen is a nitrocellulose uh, uh, derived from cotton and made, uh, uh, you know, it's a nitrocellulose. It's, um, normally it's uh, very volatile, but it's already um, neutralized by uh, adding alcohol. So now you see I'm coating it with a thin film. In fact, collagen is just a, a thin film that will make it, uh, I say, absorbent to the next stage, which is sensitizing, putting the silver on it. So it will be this, the carrier of the silver. So there, I have to elevate it and test the sides uh, for, it has to be tacky before, before you move it to the sensitizing bath. Excuse the mess in my little dark room downstairs. As you can see, so uh, I'm such a paradox because normally you have to be really, really tidy and clean uh, to be practicing this kind of. Uh, and now I'm putting it on silver. That's the silver bath, we call it. So as soon as you the plate made contact, it's already starting to be light sensitive. The silver, the silver. Well, I I call it silver, but but in fact it's silver nitrate salted with uh, a bromide and, and an iodide of potassium, uh, yeah, potassium, lithium, uh, some others use ammonium, cadmium. Me, I play it safe and I use potassium. I don't, cadmium is a very toxic chemical. So I avoid that. So, and uh, it only, uh, now I'm loading it. I think this is the video of, uh, you have to put the plate there three minutes. Uh, ah, there was a there was a gap. Can you confirm if I'm still on or but in the chat? If I'm still, hello. Yeah. So, anyways, the video is still rolling. So. So that's in the dark, in red light, in safe light. Uh, I had to, after three minutes of marinating that plate uh, with silver nitrate, it becomes uh, sensitive to light now. Now you have to put it in a carrier or what we call plate holder. So I will put it in a plate holder there. You, don't, you can barely see it, I think. So it's called a plate holder. You will see what it looks like later in the in the in bright light when I go up to shoot. Anyways, so you have to be very uh, careful there because silver is very corrosive, and so you have to wipe it the back of the plate. So it's facing down. Uh, the silver part, the wet part, should be facing down. So now that's that's me. 
And now uh, there's the video of me coming up. So let me show the plate. There's the plate. I have to put it behind uh, the camera. It's now acting like your sensor or your film. You see, from 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 that uh, behind, and I have to cover the lens now. I have to cover the lens because I would have to open it after there in the back. There is a slide there that exposes the silver, but not exactly yet because you covered the lens in front. You see how basic it is. You expose the, the plate by removing that shutter and then, okay, I go back to position and I put my hand under those, that, that uh, setup that I just made, that scene that I just put up of the rise. And you see, I have to turn off the light so that the, the plate doesn't get exposed because I opened already the front of the lens. And now I'm setting up to, for my pose. You will see, and I'm using a very DIY method. Normally there should be someone exposing it, but since I'm alone, it's a kind of, and that's how we do self for, I mean, I do self portrait. I have to turn on the light using a, uh, a switch. Uh, in fact, it's just an extension cord with a, with a switch on and off. So I can turn it off and then time the exposure. I open the, I have opened the lens there up oh, and then it's 15, well, I don't know how long it is. I think it's 20 seconds, to not moving. So the, it's that not sensitive. I mean, it's that uh, slow that it for that setup with that much light at, uh, at uh, an opening uh, like uh, F11, I think it takes around 30 seconds to expose it, to, to allow the image to travel from the lens up to the sensitized plate behind. And now it's time, as soon as you expose it, you cover the lens with my hat. That's why I wear my hat. <laughs> I cover the lens to effectively act as a shutter again, and then shut the, the lens behind. And that's your finished product. I mean, the work after. And uh, normally, I can you stay there, uh, the video that normally uh, there was a, a, a stage yet there, because after the shoot, I have to go down to the laboratory and uh, develop it. The developer is iron, it's ferrosulfate with vinegar or whatever, you know, uh, retarder that I use with the, an amount of acid to retard it, to slow down the development process. I use, I use vinegar and sugar when it's hot to make it less active and ferrosulfate with water. And that's the developer. And then after that, there's the fixing stage. Can you, can we, do we have a video of a fixing stage of anything? Okay, not that one. That one is uh, just to show you, uh, okay, pause. Uh, my activities here, part of my activities here, I get invited to a lot of uh, festivals. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, it's a rave party. It's a festival, music festival, electro, full of young people. And uh, it's, it's, I find it interesting to show them this. And, you know, I'm such a tease. I, I want to show the, uh, the smartphone and Instagram generation how it was in the epoch. So I would okay, play the video. It has sound, I think. Yeah. And you will see me there on the right. Okay, that's the scene. That's my son shooting. It's my assistant machine. So that's my setup. That, uh, that's my uh, cariton, like Sandra mentioned earlier. It's my mobile setup. I, I as you can see, uh, it's called wet plate because it only works. You can only make a picture while the plate is wet uh, with silver. It's only sensitive while the, while the plate is still floating with, uh, with, with, with silver still floating on top of it. When it dries, it's kaput. It's, you, don't have an, you don't make an image. So you have a window of about uh, uh, from the moment uh, from the moment of uh, pouring the collodion to sensitizing, 
you all in all you have a window of about 12 minutes from 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 a to c or a to z and uh and uh and so you're obliged to bring your dark room with you you know you don't just carry a camera on your neck but imagine carrying this on your neck anyways but <laughs> you don't like nowadays like we know it from how many generations now we've been used to seeing a camera is something that's hanging on my neck not this uh, not this at this time not at this period of, uh, of photography so we carry we carry a lab uh, maybe if I have time, I have it set up behind, uh, outside. I'll show you what is inside, or maybe I'll do it now. Yeah. So here it is. So by the way, here's the chemicals, the uh, the chemicals, uh, the collagen, the kind of collagen chemicals. It has. It's they're all collagen, but they're different in color because they have different ages some uh, the darkest one is the oldest one it's around four years old and the newest one is of course the lightest one and and uh, the age dictates the speed of the collagen and the contrast okay so now i think i would go to we can go to uh, we can we can go to the Okay, I go back. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I didn't realize I will lose audio when I move. So I hope it was okay with you. There you go. Is it still okay? Are we still on? Yeah. So I, I just made a quick tour of the lab. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if you had a quick look at it. I just realized I won't have audio when I move the camera. Anyways, so inside, if you see the bottle, the bottle is the developer. I would put it in a plate. Let's see a plate like that. I would put it in a plate and move it in, and then stop it with water. So there's this can of water there. And um, and then I'll bring it out. That takes around uh, about a minute, so fifteen minutes, fifteen seconds of development, or twenty or thirty, depends on on the kind of image that you're after. And so there's still control during the development stage. And then you bring it out. Uh, is there a? Do we have a video of a revelation? Yeah. Okay, that's the that's during uh, one of those festivals that I said I was participating. Yeah, so I shoot there, and you know, just uh, I love I love the 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 faces, the the wow factor when they realize what what is happening. These young people who never uh, they always see their grandmother in their pictures. Who never saw a tin type in their lives. I mean, the, the smartphone people or the digital, yeah. 
Anyways, so it always fascinates me to and some of them came back to me, uh, which makes me feel good because some of them or are, are uh, came back to me and contacted me after and I gave them one on one tutorials and they got into it. Um, uh, you know, just like that, just because they were uh, they, they got hit, <laughs> they got beaten by the wet plate bug. Anyway. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. There's no revelation. The one of uh, the one of Bunny is a revelation, but it's already. So the, you, you see the, all these people putting their beer on my camera, which is uh, which is uh, you know <laughs> I don't like. Anyways. So we go, uh, okay, so maybe we can go to the revelation. Okay, uh, just a quick uh, show, uh, just a quick, uh, you can put uh, my camera, just to give them an idea of how it looks like the negative and the positive uh, uh, effect of, of, of. So these are, these are plates. Uh, these are plates of uh, collagen plates that I did a while ago of someone. If you, I don't know, uh, uh, if you can really uh, see how the the difference of a, uh, a collagen picture, a wet plate or an amber type picture than a regular picture, because there's a silver surface in it, and it's the silver that reflects, that captures and bounces back the light. So it depends on the light that hits it. It gives it like a, something like a three D effect. But here's another another fact about what is a collagen, uh, a collagen uh, or ambrotype glass. Ambrotype glass in clear glass is just basically a negative. You see, it's a negative when, because it's transparent, it's like a film. Uh, but then it turns positive as soon as you put a black background, a black, black uh, backing to it. You see, there, see? Positive, negative, positive, negative. Yeah. And not only uh, are you limited to, this is a tin type, it's a, it's a metal. Yeah. It's the same girl because it's the, it's the one I, I have lying around. So. <laughs> so it's the same of the uh, same model. I don't know. I, need, I don't see it. I don't. It's a pity we cannot see the sharpness and the, the tonal, uh, real good tonal scale and rendition of the, but it's like that. There, it's not in focus, oh, I'm in the frame, there. Anyway, and you can also use colored glass or this one is red glass, it's, as you can see. It's a picture of my boy, it's normally transparent. It's my eldest uh, when he was 15. I use red glass. I bought a red glass, a ruby red glass. But if you put it in black or something other color, it assumes the color. So that's my son, who is 19 now. Okay. So that's it. Oh, well, that's a nice effect there. You see? Oh. And then I would like to show you this. This is a. This is a, a, an ambrotype from, from the epoch. Where is the camera? Yeah. Oh, it's too, it's, this is an ambrotype from, uh, from the epoch. It uh, is the smallest I found, but it's available. I mean, you can find easily in, mark, in flea markets. It's all over Europe or America, I don't know. But imagine. The quality of this, and this is almost 200 years old. I mean, 100, let's say 100, even at 100. What photograph can last 100 years? Retaining it's th this kind of quality after all those years in some, in some dusty attic or a drawer of someone. You know? And I bought it just like that. I found it in a, in a market, in a flea market. So that just shows you how, how archival an ambrotype is. It's a, 
it will last for at a minimum four generations because like i said it's still going the, the story is still on whoever that is after four generations so i'm sure it will be for another four generations more it can still last anyway so that's it okay maybe uh, any questions or are we, are we going to the q and a now i think i think we can wrap it up uh, already and uh, if it's okay with you okay hello Thank hello you for bringing us hello Ding. okay how's our teleporting in in time and space <laughs> see well <That's> very, uh, <laughs> we got teleported boom <laughs> yeah you brought us back in yeah, time yeah. and back to the present yeah. wow um we've got a lot of questions a lot and, of questions. Uh, really no way yes. there are people watching in fact i thought i was just <laughs> having a, a grand time having no. a monologue oh, wow <laughs> <laughs> from uh different generations actually these that's questions good, that's good. so that's, shall that's we start with the first one um, okay question okay um, so uh, yeah um Okay, the first question is from Lisa. Do you also practice other photographic processes? Yes, I practice. Uh, uh, like tomorrow, I have a digital shoot for a client. So it's for the money. <laughs> so it's a, it's a hack job time. So I also do digital commercial work and uh, over here. And, um, but I also do... Um, uh printing but i'm putting it on the sidelines because this uh, already wet plate takes about 90 percent of uh, my activity so printing because that's been taken away you know i don't need to print this kind of uh, process so it's all 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 in like what we say how is how we call it it's all in two or three into one it's a complete package from from the from the film up to the final product up it goes that's that's all the downside is because it's an original it's the same thing that went in the camera that you'll be, be bringing home it's the same glass that you saw empty and at the end of 10 minutes you're bringing home already with your image in it it means nothing is left for me or if there is something left for me like these pictures are all rejects <laughs> Because the best ones are always, of course, taken by the client, so or the the sitter. So that's the. But then I move on. Life goes on. That's life, anyway. You cannot hold on to most things, anyway. Okay, that answers the uh, practice other photographic processes. Yeah, I do alternative printing. Uh, I can even print and, some of. Uh, well, how did? Alternative printing is also utilizing this historical process from the beginning of photography, like gum bichromate, uh, platinum printing, uh, gun like printing, cyanotype. The first book, the first book uh, of photography is a cyanotype book, you know, by a female, the bio, the botany, I forgot her name, or what's her name? Yeah, the first book of uh, is an alternative process book. The ever published is a cyanotype, a blue cyanotype is blue printing in a common in common language using uh, uh, ferric uh, salts. But then, among all the substrates, if I may ask uh, to follow up on another question by uh, among all the substrates, uh, glass, thin, which one do you prefer to use, wet plate, collagen, or? I prefer glass. I prefer glass, uh, not only for like uh, uh, reasons that I have cited before for the poetry, for the for its, uh, uh, you know, for its, uh, 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 how do you call that, the metaphor, the, uh, the tons of metaphors that you can take off from it uh, by using glass, you know, like life, about life itself, if I can be philosophical, life as being brittle life as being durable but still fragile you know those are easily can easily be uh, explored using the method and in fact there is this uh, 
the like I mentioned earlier, uh, the contemporary appreciation of wet plate is so different from when it started to, uh, about 150 years ago in the 1850s. Uh, because at that time, it's perfection, like, like what you saw in that small little picture. It's uh, everything is in focus, sharp. Every, uh, all photographers are after that they're the biggest challenge. But at, in the contemporary uh, aesthetic appreciation of it, it's more the artifacts that people appreciate. You know? And I like it because and it's also what attracted me to it because it's, it, in, it, it embraces the fact that uh, we can be broken. We can be, uh, uh, we're just made up of uh, skid marks of our pains and suffering and all that. We might as well include that you know, in, our, in the story of our life. And that's how we, uh, the glass speaks to me. That's beautifully said. I think that also answers one of the questions of an anonymous attendee who was wondering why you're still using this old technique and uh, what is the significance of it as an artwork? But uh, yeah, you know, uh, I mean, it's cliche artwork. to say. Uh, uh, it's cliche to say you you learn from the past, you know, uh, and. And, and there's a lot to be learned from it, you know. And I'm just humble enough to recognize what have already been uh, achieved. I'm like we say, uh, we're sitting on the back of masters of these people. I mean, it's just also to, to rend homage to homage to these pioneers and keep them. But it's not just me. There's, uh, uh, fortunately and happily, there's a big movement of collagen photographers happening now. You know, when I started this, there's just, there's just uh, maybe two or three of us in Paris. You know, and now the, because of the internet, ironically, it's also the technology that made it boom. You know, <laughs> so so many are trying to do it because they see they see how different it is and they get curious and then they eventually they get sold, sold, sold to it. And a lot of people, especially young people who are serious into, seriously into image making or photography for that matter, go to film just because they got disgusted by, you know, and frustrated by the uh, preciseness of digital. I'm not bashing digital. It, it has its uh, own world, you know, but it's that it became boring for most people, and it's so predictable. It's so precise, and and, and, and a lot of people and, are geeks at the heart. <laughs> they like they like real engagement in the making of something. Their hand, you know, they 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 get the challenge of uh, of how do I manipulate this? How do I make it sing for me? Things like that. <laughs> yeah. Then we what have else? one part. One very technical question, because there's yeah. somebody who, uh, his name is Rafael Miguel de la Cruz, and okay. uh, he says that, thank you for sharing your knowledge about Ambrotype. I was able to start with this process with a wet plate, Colombian, mm -hmm. with support from a local film lab. Sad mm -hmm. to say, though, it was hindered by the pandemic. What mm -hmm. can you suggest to me or any people who are who is trying to explore this area of photography given the fact that it's hard to acquire the chemicals because yeah. he can mix chemicals here in the Philippines. Some chemicals yeah. using this process but are he needs ba 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 That's also one my, my problem before. Uh, but uh, I'm here in Europe where I can, have, I can have access. When I went there in the Philippines, that's my problem. Where do I access it? I wanted to shoot there. But if you have a, you know, there's a will, there's the way. And uh, I was able to shoot there. Uh, by uh, by means and there's a network of other photographers who would know where to get it and 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 like that and uh, to learn it is another thing you know I uh, I learned learned it uh, the autodidact way uh, meaning self taught uh, nobody taught me except for like I said uh, well in a sense those masters that I look up to taught me with what they left behind, you know, the, the text. But I have to translate it in English, but, you know, that's another layer of <laughs> difficulty. But, so, so you think, um, in terms like of I said, uh, availability can do it. of chemicals, 
it's possible to find yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, alternative chemicals? I mean, uh, there, there's ways. There's uh, the U.S. ships to uh, with hazmat restrictions. Of course, they can ship to the to Manila. I know there's two uh, participating in the art fair. There is uh, another Colombian girl and uh, Reina Adelia is exhibiting there also. Uh, some Colombian guys. So uh, her chemicals, she brought them here by uh, by uh, U.S. ordered it in U.S. So. And it's a right it's shape, possible. and uh, I mean it's legal because it's hazmat protected. Yeah. Okay. I, but I can follow understand the, the danger. Of it. Okay. Follow up. Follow up. Uh, just the dog. I want to ask a question. Sorry about that. In developing the plates, can I use commercially available developers? Ilford, Boda. Uh, no, well, maybe yes, but uh, you're just making it more difficult. You know? Like I said, the developer is just ferrosulfate. Ferrosulfate is a very common chemical. You use it in, uh, in, in uh, gardening or pool, cleaning the, the swimming pool. And you just need 16 grams to make around 400, uh, 400 uh, half a liter. 16 grams of ferrosulfate, and then you put some vinegar uh, and alcohol, and you have a developer. And then if it's too hot, you have to, because it's, if it's too hot, I add things like sugar and like that. Just to re, you just have to know chemistry a little bit and trial and error, you know, just a little bit of chemistry. I mean, I didn't, I, I was absent. All the time in chemistry, but I still was able to learn things. You know, <laughs> I, I failed chemistry as a student. So, but then I would, I should have uh, listened. Uh, I, I should not have been such a rebel. <laughs> okay, what else? No more? Yeah. So no, no, no. We have lots more. <laughs> so oh, um, do we have time? We have. Uh, how do you maintain okay. your camera? Yeah, we still have time. How, how do you maintain your camera? Okay. Camera or maintaining the oh, and the person wants to know if the camera has bogged down on you. Yes, yes, especially this one. I brought this one. I'm such a stupid. I'm so stupid. I brought this one maybe just to show off and to shock the people in the in a rain festival in the middle of summer. Not no, not thinking that you know. I mean, I'm putting it at risk already, putting it in, a, in an environment, everybody's drunk and dancing and like that. You know. But still, I'm stupid enough to bring it there. And then it rained. And I'm in the open. So it got all soaked up and wet. And you know, wood and water, they don't go together. <laughs> so it, it all got warped up. And uh, so I had to make uh, repairs. If you notice, there are some repairs on the, I had to strengthen the wood so I can, you see, the things you learn, not just photography, you will learn carpentry, you will learn. <laughs> yeah, it's, and that's the beauty of this process. Everything is DIY because most of the things are already long gone. I mean, it's a hundred year old. Nobody's making this stuff anymore. You know? uh, inside the plate holder, you will see there's acrylic pieces just to make the... Because with this camera, that's 30 by 30, I can make smaller pictures like this up to this. You know, with the same camera, so it's it's something like, what more can you ask for? It's a multi-format camera. So, but you need to make the adapters. So that's how I maintain. I mean, you have to learn many things: uh, carpentry, like I said, chemistry. Uh, what else? I, I even you see the the tissue that's draping the the to make it like a dark cloth on my lab, the red thing there. Uh, it's sewed by hand, you know. I sewed it by hand. I have a machine, but I don't know how to use the machine. So, you know, I, I spent an all day just sewing it by hand. It's getting bleeding. It, it's bleeding already, and it's still gone. And that's it. Because it's three layers of cloth, you know, it's hard. hard, hard, hard. But it's just to make a tissue uh, like the size of a, of a wall. You know? So you just imagine just sewing all around it. By hand, so but still, I'm consistent with being, you know, handy. Uh, handy. And, I mean, uh, good with your by hand, hands, even if, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so 
You seem to be having a lot of fun being uh, with this process. And, I'm having fun uh, also and, sharing it with you. Okay, but I, we wonder, you know, how much does this all cost? Uh, Christian Ibanez asks, you know, how well, about your supplies? Uh, the only cost is initial. I mean, in, initial in the sense that you have to the hardware by the hardware, the chemical, the camera, the uh, what else, the and the lights uh, and the lens. The lens is the most expensive part in terms of chemical. How much? Huh? My How lens, much? Much? that lens you you cannot buy for a thousand euro. <laughs> the lens that I'm using. So don't tell that to the Akyat Bahai Gang. They might uh, come to me and steal my lens. <laughs> but do you need that kind of a lens? Yes, yes, because that's part of it. That's part of the... I mean, it's not that I'm being consistent with the look of the epoch or, or anything, but I really love the, the, uh, the rendition of the lens. The, you can tell the difference. Like like uh, like with modern uh, with modern uh, there's my wife bringing me food. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that probably answers the question. What brought you to Paris, my wife? Yeah, no, she kidnapped me. <laughs> <laughs> we reverse the order of things. Normally, it's the Filipinos kidnapping French uh, in the south, and uh, you know that's the revenge. <laughs> okay, so that answers anyway, so the, 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 how you got the chemical the is the silver. The one time the most expensive purchase in the chemistry is the silver and nitrate. It's, it's one time I said because it can last indefinitely. Uh, you just have to maintain it, add it when the level of the water, which evaporates or get, uh, it sticks to the plate, of course, you know, uh, after a after hundred plates. The liquid uh, gets uh, evaporates or sticks uh, to it, so you just have to maintain it. So, uh, and it's silver; it's a precious metal. So that's the most expensive part, which is like about uh, uh, one euro per gram or uh, one hundred euro per one hundred grams. So one euro is about fifty-eight pesos per, per gram. gram. How, and how uh, many grams to make do you one use? to make one, uh, make one sensitizing bath. Suitable for eight by ten or oh, one liter. One liter, you just add nine grams of silver. Oh, 90 grams of silver. Wow. 90 grams of silver. So in what uh, in one liter of uh, of chemical. And you have and your sensitizing liter. bath that you just have to sun. There's also the maintenance of it. Well, somebody asked you about maintenance. There's a there's a thing called maintaining your silver. You, because uh, uh, as time goes, or as many plates passes through it, it gets uh, gets uh, contaminated with other drugs and stuff mm -hmm. and alcohol. Because the the like I said, collagen is alcohol. Nitrocellulose, four percent mm -hmm. and ninety six percent mix of equal portions of ether and alcohol. Only four percent of nitrocellulose. So all that alcohol gets soaked in silver, and it stays there if you don't. Uh, evaporate it and it affects your picture if you don't so you just have to sun it after each session you sun it just to get rid of the organics and you will see silver silver is a good determinant of uh, it's used in science or in medical in, to uh, detect detect uh, uh, contamination in water so that's how good the uh, uh, barom, I mean, measure of purity silver is any contaminant goes black. That's why we have stains in our hands, you know, because it's we are organic. So as soon as you get contact with silver, it goes black. And when it's exposed to the sun, it's the sun that uh, reaction to UV, because like I said, it's silver that makes the plate sensitive to light. You see, silver is the key. Shine like silver. <laughs> Wow. So that's you, the technical. You, yes, you seem to love this complex, complex process. So uh, there's one question asked by Tricky. What made you go into this process? Are you a masochist? I mean, do you like just, you know, <laughs> doing hard things for yourself? <laughs> what well, makes it fun? I'm a kind of, uh, uh, maybe, a, you know, a kind of masochist. But uh, there's people like that. We, we get challenged. We have uh, all, uh, I mean, 
what's life is for if there's no challenge? You know? It's it's going to be boring, boring like digital. I don't know. No, I'm not bashing digital, <laughs> but uh, what I'm saying is, if it's easy, why go through it? It's so easy. You know? It's just uh, I mean, it's a crazy question, but. If it's so easy, why did we get, you know, born or born? Well, for this art fair, we are actually talking about those non-fungible tokens, NFTs. Mm. And for me, I was thinking... That's a good but thing. Ambrotype is an NFT too of the 18th century. Exactly. Because it's the one and only copy that you will have. Yeah, you will, forever you will keep NFT. forever. It's a. It is a token that is non-fungible. That is. The only difference, like, uh, like what makes also an NFT is the other way. Is the other in the other end. You know, NFT uh, it lasts because it doesn't exist. You know, the that theory. You don't touch okay. it, and on the other end, this one lasts because you can touch it and it's real in front of you. You can see it. You can feel it. You know? That's the, where the contrast lies, but that's why I said it's a good thing. Both are good. Coming, things. coming, going back to the challenges, okay? Because there, mm. it, it feels that there's a lot of uh, listeners here who are uh, into this uh, process. How do you store collodion uh, chemicals? What would you recommend to keep that at home? How do you uh, store it? You, you have to first. As soon as you get it, you neutralize it. You know, you mix as much as possible and keep it in a um, uh, in a cold, dry place, like in the labels of most drugs. You know, keep in cold, dry places, out of reach of children. <laughs> so, you know, the, that uh, that precaution always. In, most chemicals have that anyway. It's basic, but because it's uh, maybe their fear is because it's volatile and it can be toxic to smell because it has ether. You know, it's just an inconvenience. I mean, you would not drink too much uh, Coke. I mean, uh, soda can be, if you drink in excess, can be you know, deadly also. Anything in excess and anything stupid, if you have common sense, you would not drink it. The only risk is it has the same color as beer. So don't store it in a in 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 glasses that's used for drinking because you might mistake it for some alcohol and it smells like alcohol it has alcohol wow. but what i remember is you have a refrigerator just for your yes cups. yes i have dedicated because yeah. i have kids and i uh, you don't mix it with anything that uh, alimentation yeah. i mean uh, for eating Food. for yeah. your uh, you don't you don't mix those. Uh, I mean, people are, have common sense anyway. They would know that. So, use your, use the bottom line is use your common sense. So we have another question here. Um, what is the story behind the camera itself, and how did you acquire it? The camera is from another collagenist who's moving up to a bigger size in Momart. This camera. We got it from, I got it from another collagenist, but I don't know, uh, I'm sure he got it from, if he's the same owner, I mean, the final owner. It, 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 he has uh, messed up with it already a lot. I mean, made changes with it a lot. So I know that it's been used uh, contemporarily with, with modern screws instead of the old uh, rusted screws changed already. And uh, the wheels have been uh, changed to modern locking mechanism while before there's a pedal that you step and you know, and but I kept those just just uh, you know to be consistent anyway. <laughs> so that I, I bought from another uh, famous photographer who's doing collagen who wanted who wanted to move up to bigger size, just one size bigger, 40 by 50. And how many sizes are there? Is is that like a medium-sized one or? 40 by 50 is like, uh, how imagine 40 by 50 is, I don't know, it's in inches, inches uh, at the top like of my head. Centimeter, centimeter. Yeah. yeah, this one is 30 by 30. So just 10 centimeters uh, on the side bigger and uh, uh, 50, uh, 20 centimeters lar uh, taller. 
what he thought of. Follow-up question. Uh, Mumar, he lives in the foot of Pumar, so it's a fascinating guy also. Follow-up question from JR yeah. and Cheta. Okay. He sees a lot of stunning Hello, gay JR. types on... <laughs> I know <laughs> JR, know the Alaska boy. Yeah. <laughs> he sees a lot of pin types online, but he's not sure if uh, they've been worked up in Photoshop. What makes a good pin type? For example, what are the qualities that makes a good pin type? A good, um, is, uh, I don't know. That's a very loaded one because there are people, who, like I said, uh, who appreciate it for the imperfections. Like, like, like what I'm ex exhibiting now. Uh, that's not how I normally would shoot, uh, but I like how it came out. You know, uh, the hand is blurred. Remember the the fist mm -hmm. that comes out from the right. But it's uh, it's deliberate. That I want I want I want to portray that there's there's movement still uh, somehow, and at the same time it's fuzzy. It cannot be seen or something like that. I like that that fuzziness and all the rock and roll uh, uh, detritus on the bottom of it. I like imperfection for, for things like that. But the, for portraits, of course, you don't want that scar running on the face uh, where there was no scar on the face of, the, of a model like this. You, know? <laughs> you, don't, you don't want that. So it depends. It depends on a good tin type is uh, something that uh, uh, whoever would eventually get it would appreciate and see its value. You know? And that's a good tin type. It's a Ryuzi, uh, how you say, in, it's a Except mission accomplished already. You know, it's a mission accomplished for any photographer when, when uh, uh, the result gets appreciated. You see, that's a good tin. But type. is it, but is it possible to mess around with the wet collagen process yeah. uh, by using the, Photoshop? You know, ah yes, yes, of course, it's possible if you like it. But it can be, it's, why would you do that? Then I, I'll just shoot digital and mess it up. You know, if, I, if, I, if I'll do, no, depends on kind of uh, manipulate, because for example, me for to, to upload things on the internet, because it doesn't look the same. What you would see uh, as soon as you upload it, as soon as you have scanned it or reproduced it, it's not the real thing anyway. So what you would try to do is scan it or reproduce it, replicate the image, as close as possible to how you will see it in person. So you, you adjust the levels of the contrast, you adjust the color, the saturation, the tone, and, uh, but you don't introduce what is not there. That's when it's foul. I mean, for me, according to me, but there are people who's using it as art. There are even people who would make collagen and totally mess it up and remove the image and just get the, the border and attach it to a digital clean image and to make it look like a collagen, you know? But it's so obvious for us who do it. You know, it's a, it's a laughable thing. But chacun son truc, like they say in French. Okay. You know, so many so questions. Much. So many yeah. questions still. We have 10 uh, minutes left. Yes. Okay, no, love them all. Left. Um, just what makes a good tin type? quickly? That's what, what I just answered. Quality? That's what I just answered. Yes, I think it okay. depends. It, it, a good tin type is tin type well received by the by the one who's keeping it after. That's a good tin type, no matter what's in I, there. We have to answer this question. It's from Allegra. She's eight years old, yes. uh, and yes. she she asks, "How do people get photos taken now that there is COVID?" We do the Zoom. <laughs> We do the Zoom. That's why we thought of the Zoom thing. But of course, it will not be. It will. Uh, it can only go uh, as close to the to the real thing because it's it, it's in glass. But the experience itself would be the same. You know, it may not be as as uh, because I'm. We will be shooting through a screen. You know, it's not the resolution of my lens. It's not the resolution of the the sensor of my camera of the of the this big. Humungus Big Berta here behind me. Yeah. Uh, it will not be. It's still limited by the. Uh, that's why you keep still for about 20 seconds because uh, just to gain a little bit of clarity on the image when we do the zoom, maybe we can, but still, 
we will we will not be we will not be tricking people into doing it and saying it's a it's as good as the, the real thing no it's the experience the most important and eventually you get the glass you know anyway so all good <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> <In fact. laughs> thank you allegra for that question any plans to do a wet plate uh, process workshop in the philippines i think what he was, does i was reading questions besides <laughs> Do you have uh, any plans of doing a workshop in the flesh? I'm the always willing to do a workshop in the Philippines. Who will pay for my fare? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, but I that's think the only thing, that's the only thing soon. stopping me. Who will? Uh, who will? Yeah, I mean, if there's some if if there's some project that's uh, worth doing, why not? I would fly there and. Uh, do the, I, all, I I did the workshop last time in the, I mean the small one, but. Uh, I'm always uh, it's the it's it's one part of it that I love. It's sharing it but, uh, in in making sure it it rolls on, it goes on and perpetuates itself to another century or you know because anyways, okay. how how can it last? It's only memory. We have to tell and share it and then make sure it's uh, somebody inherits it. Last few questions. What is okay. your favorite part of the process? The revelation, the last part, because that's where you see the ooze and you hear the ooze and ass of people. You ah, oh, oh, I look like my grandmother. Ah, oh, how? Why is it like that? And the, you know, it's not click. It's not a, <laughs> and that's the the satisfaction, the instant satisfaction that you you see in the faces of people looking at when it it the image reveals in front of them slowly like that come out from negative to something you know you see you see the eyes first appear like that in all its brightness like that wow that's my favorite part of course like i said to negate the masochist i don't like suffering <laughs> making making uh, sniffing sniffing at her all day of course who would love that <laughs> or, or cutting glass and getting cut on the process and you know just walking around Paris and carrying all these windows and uh, but now I got smarter I just carry a cutter and then um, cut them into smaller pieces and <laughs> before I, you will see me with my hat carrying a whole window and you know, people get scared like I, I, I was Akyat Bahay Gang you know, you know Akyat Bahay Gang <laughs> yeah I didn't steal Sorry. anything just the window <laughs> So, so I guess you work with different thicknesses of glass, no? Oh. It doesn't affect the final the age image. of glass. Of course, it it affects it, but it adds oh. to the challenge and it adds to the final look. You know, sometimes uh, it's crooked. Sometimes it depends on the manufacturer because old glass, you would know, it's really full of of uh, bumps and you know valleys and hills and valleys and like that. It's the crooked the surface. But then it adds to the to the the hazard, the beauty of hazard in a sense. But that's as far as it goes because you still want to control the output. And once you know it, you know you have this bigger piece of glass. You cut one part, and you would study after. Okay, it, the collagen flows like that, and up, 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 and it's not sensitive to light. It has some some kind of coating in the manufacturer. Things like that you have to find out first. And then you play with it, like most things. You know, there's no such thing as easily, uh, you know, easy, becoming easy. You first have to discover. You learn your well, mistakes. <laughs> you learn from you mistakes. Learn from mistakes, yes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, sometimes it helps to uh, hear from professionals what they can do. There's another very technical question. You okay. said earlier that. You said earlier that the color of collodion dictates the speed or the yeah, ISO. The, the age, correct? The okay. You see, that's the, the other extreme. That's four years old. That's about uh, three months. See the difference. So but does the it thing mean is, that the, that's the older what, the, the reason, collodion, the faster the speed? Yes, yes. The, the younger is, 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 there's more speed. But then when you have, we have a younger collodion, it's so flat. 
there's no contrast. So there's a balance that you have to do. So what I do, why, why I keep all these old and new collagen, I just mix them to come up with a compromise. You know? I compromise the speed. And so I put among, like, uh, where is my contrast bottle? The old bottle is a contrast bottle. And my speed my, is my new mix. Is the, what is that? Don't don't put it next to something edible or baka ma baka matigok ka bigla yung bigla ka na lang mangingisay. Na inum you you mistook collagen for beer. Imagine. You will so, shine like silver after. Anyway. <laughs> after all of those questions, um, we sorry for the, gone... the morbid, uh, morbid idea. No, no, no. Anyways, you you've gone through. Uh, you mentioned all the challenges and uh, the complexity of uh, working with this uh, process, but you've also uh, mentioned your uh, the happiness that you you get from the joy you get. From it shows in my face, do you, oh, do you, how yeah, happy I am. Not necessarily <laughs> the result, but the the reaction of your sitters. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what brings you joy. I think I think that comes process. from my theater background. I mean, I'm a, I'm a natural performer. Oh, let I mean that's too not, that's so immodest to say. I mean, it's not it comes natural to me. I like to to elicit reaction from people, positive reaction, but you know. There's nothing wrong with that, uh, but yeah, I like I like that kind of reaction. I like to, uh, no matter how momentary, uh, when when the image appears, but then they get to bring it home. That's you see, that's the that's the good part. And remember, maybe not just, remember not just the picture, but remember how it was made. So that's how we perpetuate a beautiful thing. Okay. Okay. So time's up. Yeah. yeah. Time's up. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, please check out our website, artn23.com. Uh, and through a Zoom sitting, virtual Zoom sitting, you can also look at the mechanics on our website and then contact us and then look at Ding's exhibit um, in Art Fair Philippines. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram. Follow us. Oh, on yes. Perfect. Follow us on Instagram. Yes. I see if I'm Instagram savvy. I don't even update. Anyway, okay, no. go on, go on. Go on with the closing remarks. And, I say uh, bye bye. Well, we think we let's thank all our audience for attending and for asking such uh, you know interesting questions that make us uh, get to know you more. Uh, thing. And oh, okay. thank you to thank you to you. I know that you. You love sharing your work yeah. and your, uh, your When I say my pleasure, this. it's extreme pleasure. Yes, <laughs> you can never go. You can feel can it. Ever, and it's truer you can than feel that. It. That's true. That's true. And uh, we thank also Art Fair Philippines for uh, hosting this and inviting us yes, to present you. the work of Ding all the way from Paris. Thanks uh, for the chance. Yes. And yeah. we hope to see Ding sometime in the Philippines. And for all the all audience, hope open. to see you around. Get in touch. I, I, I'm, I'm a, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not a secret. I mean, a secretive person, or I take credit for anything that I said today. Everything I learned, somebody else already said that before. Everything that I said, somebody else, you know, after for uh, two hundred years, you know, it, it cannot be. I cannot claim credit for everything, anything that I said. Yeah, I'm just passing it on. So get in touch so that I can pass it on for the audience Thank you. who's interested. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. And I'll... bye bye. Merci. Bye bye. Ngiti daw tayo, ngiti daw tayo, Mr. Pogi. Okay, kite. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you very much, Ding, Sandra, and Christina for participating in our Open Studios program. I think Ding has inspired maybe a 
community of collodionists or would-be collodionists. This ends our session today. Please check the Art Fair website for more events at the fair. Thank you and good evening.